I'll have to say one of the greatest privileges of my life has been a, being able to count Donald Trump as a friend. I've known him for almost seven years, and I was so excited to see him. I remember on election night, Mr. President, being there at the Hilton on the front line with you when you uh, were elected president of the United States. Uh, he is the most pro-life, pro-religious liberty, pro-Israel president in the history of our great country. And I've said often, I believe he is the most consequential president since Abraham Lincoln. You know, absolutely. When he, when he ran for president, started running for president in 2015, that's when I got to know him. And one of the things he started talking about beyond some what everybody knew were big issues, he started talking about the importance of Christmas and what a tragedy it was we weren't saying Merry Christmas. And he was absolutely correct about that. And he wanted to make it politically correct to say Christmas again. And by the way, he followed through on that. When he arrived at the White House, he and the First Lady um, hosted some beautiful Christmas parties and they were always gracious to invite Amy and me to attend. And on several of those occasions, uh, at the end of the Christmas party, he was in the foyer of the White House, he invited me to come up to the podium and share with the group what the real meaning of Christmas was and to lead in prayer. So I thought, Mr. President, since you are back in our house of worship today and our guest, I'd return the compliment. We would love for you to come and share whatever is on your heart, but especially a Christmas greeting for us. Would you join me in welcoming our great friend and the 45th President of the United States of America, President Donald J. Trump. Come on up, Mr. President. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. I love you. Robert, I want to thank you so much. Uh, you know, you never told me how beautiful this is. This is some real place. What a job you've done, too. Highly respected man. And it is true, I was a little insulted when I first met him. I met him through watching television. He does very well on television and spreading the word. And he started talking about a man that he watched and he's been watching. And he may not know the Bible as well as all of us, but he loves God, he loves Jesus, and he's a leader, and he's going to lead us into great things in helping and saving Christianity. And we've done a real job. And as you know, we're in trouble now. We're in trouble. I think our nation's in great trouble. I don't think we've ever had a a time like this with what happened in Afghanistan, the way that was done so badly. And you look at the borders and you look at the inflation, which is going to rip our country to pieces. We had no inflation. We had oil, much of it coming from Texas. We even, we even filled up the strategic reserves for decades and decades. They were empty and getting lower all the time. And we saw the prices at the right price. I said, let's fill it up. What about those strategic reserves? 75 million barrels we filled up. And we made a good deal for the country. We made a good deal for Texas. But I will say that uh, there's a lot of clouds hanging over our country right now, very dark clouds. But we will come back bigger and better and stronger than ever before. I'm telling you that. We won't let this happen. We won't let it happen. And there's such spirit out there right now. I've never seen anything like it. I will say that um, when I look at a group of people like this, the, the love in this room, the love for this gentleman, and for you, 
Amy, thank you very much for being here and being with us. But the love in this room is uh, incredible. But I will say the love all over the country is incredible. They want to see things happen. They love our country, and they want to see good things happen. And that will take place. And, you know, they wrote these beautiful words for me. Look at these beautiful words. But I said, I really would rather speak from the heart. Okay, if that makes sense. It's so nicely, look at that, so nicely. It says, thank you. They say, Pastor Robert. I just said, I just think of you as Pastor or Robert, but I'm going to put them together, Pastor Robert. But I'm thrilled to be here with you today, and that's true. And First Baptist Church, which is a respected place of worship all over the world because of what you've done and what you've done, Robert, all over the world. And I have to just start by wishing everybody a very, very Merry Christmas because it's a, it's a great time of, it's a great time of the year. I think it's my favorite time of the year. I miss my parents. I had great parents. I had wonderful parents and I miss them always more so on Christmas. But our First Lady, I think, who was loved by everybody, she didn't get exactly a fair shake. She would make the most beautiful Christmas decorations. And I remember she made these magnificent red trees and the media said, oh, that's terrible. I said, honey, next time try white. She made magnificent, remember? The most beautiful you've ever seen, white trees. And they said, oh, that's terrible. I said, the next time, Let's do it more traditional. Let's go with green. Uh, we went with beautiful green trees, and they said, why wouldn't they have made them white like they used to be? <laughs> but I'll tell you what, she's loved all over, and she's uh, got a tremendous heart, and she says hello, okay? And very specifically to you and your wonderful wife. But more than 2,000 years ago, an angel, the Lord appeared and really it's, uh, it's been a long and beautiful history, but an angel of the Lord appeared to humble shepherds and proclaimed the reason for our Christmas joy. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Now, when I was listening to Robert, uh, perhaps unknowingly, you use the word Savior a lot. And our country needs a Savior right now, and our country has a Savior. And that's not me. That's somebody much higher up than me. <laughs> much higher up. We just do what we have to do. But the life and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ forever changed the world. It's impossible to think of the life of our own country without the influence of his example and of his teachings. Our miraculous founding, overcoming civil war, abolishing slavery, defeating communism and fascism, reaching boundless heights of science and discovery, so many incredible things, even right outside the magnificent skyscrapers and the whole development that this beautiful church is a part of. So different, so beautiful, however, so beautiful. And uh, the United States ultimately becoming a truly great nation, and we're going to keep it that way. We're going to keep it that way. We're not going to let it go. I'm not going to let it go. But none of this could have ever happened without Jesus Christ and his followers and his church. None of it. And we have to remember that Jesus Christ is the ultimate source of our strength and of our hope. And here and everywhere and for all time, Jesus Christ. And we want to just thank everybody who believes because we're believing in our country. We're believing in the world. We're believing in life. This Christmas, let us pray for the hundreds of thousands of men and women serving in our nation's military. I'm so proud of what we were able to do for our military. And 
And with what happened recently, the, the disgrace that was put on it by the way we left, it looked like we left in surrender, and we didn't leave in surrender. We left in strength. We could have left. We were set to leave in strength and dignity, and it wasn't handled well. It was handled, I think, perhaps, and I've said this often, I think it was the most embarrassing day in the history of our country, the way we left. We can't let that happen. We have to be respected throughout the world. And if we're not respected for strength, we are not going to be a nation too much longer. We'll be a nation in a lot of trouble. But I want to just uh, thank the incredible people of the military, because they understand what I'm saying better than anybody could understand it, better than anybody could. And the Americans in law enforcement who dedicate their lives to keeping our community safe, who aren't allowed to do their jobs in many cases. When you look at what's happening throughout our country with the crime, the crime that nobody's ever seen anything, where they go into department stores in packs, and they take everything, they break everything. The police aren't allowed to do their jobs. We have to give the police their authority back, and we have to give them their dignity back. And all of it will stop very quickly. <laughs> Let us thank Almighty God for our nation, for our precious freedoms, and our most of all, and I have to say this, for the gift of God's everlasting mercy and grace. We ask God to bless our nation and our people with faith and hope and love and peace. Once again, I have to say that uh, on behalf of the people of this country, we all love you. We love what you stand for. We love what you represent. Melania will be here the next time, and we will do this together because I said, don't worry, I'll do this one all by myself. And she said, I'd love to go. Now that I see how beautiful this is, she's going to be very upset with me. <laughs> very, very upset. But seriously, we have a incredible country. It will be more incredible in years to come. We will do what has to be done to Make America great again. We are going to make America great again. We are never going to forget that message. And I want to thank Robert and Amy, and I want to thank everybody in the audience. And it's, we have to say, it's America first, and make America great again. And we will do it. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Great honor to be with you. Thank you, Robert.